What's up, folks? I'm here to do another quick X-Wing miniatures video. I want to break down the Rogue Class Starfighter, which is another ask I got in that Reddit thread on the X-Wing miniatures Reddit, uh, just to see kind of what people wanted to hear about. And somebody asked about the Rogue Class Starfighter, which is near and dear to my heart, being a <laughs> dirty, dirty scum and villainy player. Um, just did my first one of these videos, and it was fairly long. So I'm going to try to brace through this fairly quickly, cover all the details, talk a little bit about the ship itself, where it comes from, and then all of the pilots in both Scum and Separatists, and we'll see how we do. So obviously here it's a black box. It's one of the newer releases and one of the latest actual new plastic releases we've gotten for X-Wing miniatures. Uh, and as you can see here, also it's available for Scum and Separatist and comes with the sweet dual paint job with the nice clean Intimidating Separatist or the uh, flashy distracting uh, Scum and Villainy which is totally in character with the pilots too, in both cases. So we'll go ahead and jump in there. Super quick background, the Rogue Class Starfighter is a modified Utapowan Porax 38. It's made by Bactoid, which you will know from some of the other key Separatist ships. Um, and it is canon, officially. So jumping right into that, we're not gonna spend too much time talking about the lore of the ship because while I like it, uh, you can find that. So. Jumping right in here, in Scum, you will see this ship with five different pilots, and then in Separatist, you'll see a full six, counting the generics. And I'm gonna jump through each individual pilot ability in a second here, but the first thing I wanna focus on is the chassis itself. And the chassis is gonna be the same across the board, but I will take a minute to highlight that the actual chassis ability, the ability that's stapled to the ship is different between the factions, and in some cases, between the pilots. So right off the bat, we're looking at a stat line here of two base attack dice, do evade dice, five hull and two shields. So it's an X-Wing with one less attack die, uh, trades one shield for one hull. So typical scum, it's a little bit heavier on the hull and a little bit lighter on the shields, um, which is an interesting piece. But in terms of actions, it's got a lot of linked actions. Got all of these here with focus to red boost, focus to red barrel roll, uh, evade to red barrel roll, and the lock to red boost. So it actually has a lot of mobility but that's a lot of red. And then if you look at the dial here, it doesn't have a ton of white. It doesn't have any, excuse me, it doesn't have a lot of blue. So it doesn't have any hard turns that clear stress. So you can use those red maneuvers, but you wanna be really careful with that unless you have a way to benefit from the actions. Now, one thing I do also wanna highlight is that every single one of these, every single one of them across the board between both factions, all, what is that, 11 different fighters are four points right now. So that's kind of fun. Um, and they all have two cannon slots, and then the other slots do vary, but usually they have some combination of mod and illicit, which also is cool. Uh, now, they do also come with a signature upgrade. And before I get too deep into this, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, that being proton cannons. And then the alternative cannon is going to be your synced cannon. Both of these take up two cannon slots. Yeah, so they take two slots, so you can't do any other cannon at this point. Um, it is important to note that these can always take two cannons. You could take a heavy laser cannon and an ion cannon. Uh, that's very expensive coming in at 10 points, but it gives you the extra punch in bullseye and then also gives you the option to have an extra die in your full front arc, which is a big downside on these guys. Coming stock with two attack dice really does hurt this as a chassis. But proton cannons are a really interesting upgrade that I really like and I'm gonna talk about a lot. So base four attack dice, but only in bullseye. So it's, and it's only range two to three, but it's a very, very scary weapon because it's base four attack dice. And unlike heavy laser cannon comes in at the same points cost, but number one, you can only fire it every other turn because it takes two charges to shoot it and they only recur one per turn. And then number two, instead of changing all of your crit results to hit results, it, you can soft mod one eyeball or hit into a crit. So it has a soft passive mod, which is amazing. Um, so it's bullseye only on ships that tend to have low initiative, but with the volume of, with the number of ships on the board nowadays, you're very likely to have shots. And with the volume of kind of slower, thicker, heavier base ships on the board, you should have no trouble getting shots with that, even on the lower initiative pilots. So I would definitely consider or encourage experimenting with the Proton Cannon because it does have such a punch with that four point passive mod, super good. Uh, but I do wanna be sure to talk about all the different options just because all of these do have pretty significant, um, uh, not significant. <laughs> all of these chassis and ships do have the loadout to take your proton cannons and something else. They don't all have the loadout to take your synced cannons. Uh, I am looking at the generic here, but most of the others are named. I honestly, I would skip right over the generics on this, which is, you know, whatever. 
<laughs> we'll talk about that a bit more in separatists where the generics have a little bit more of it where the generics have a little bit more of a home but i would completely ignore the outer rim hunter in scum uh so but let's touch on the chassis again real quick because i want to highlight this chassis ability so in scum all of these ships have the ability while you perform an attack if the defender is in your bullseye defense dice cannot be modified using green tokens which is fantastic uh, my understanding is that will ignore reinforce. It certainly will ignore focus, evade, and uh, calculate dice, or tokens rather. So really, really good. And it's easy to forget that. Um, that combos well with uh, abilities like Predator, but also cannons like the Proton Cannon or Heavy, heavy Laser Cannon. So that's really good uh, and important to remember. But there's a lot of chatter, and there's a lot of good reason for the chatter that having bullseye specific abilities, especially on lower initiative ships is a big downside. So the alternative is you can take synced laser cannons, which is staple a three die forward arc attack. So compensates completely for that two, for, two die forward arc attack, makes it more of a standard ship. Uh, it still only throws three dice at range one, but uh, throws three at ranges two to three in the full arc, which is a nice buff to their offense. Uh, and also if you are calculating, meaning if you have a calculate token at the end of the attack, then the defender does not apply the range bonus. So if you're taking pot shots at ships at range three, that's really nice because it counts as range two instead of range three. So they don't get the extra evade die. Um, most of these pilots, especially in scum, don't have the ability to get calculate tokens. So there is that, but it's something to keep in mind. But the real reason you take synced cannons is just to have a full three dice attack in your full arc that can be shot at uh, range two to three. So it's still good to consider. It does come in at two points higher than the proton cannons, which can be very meaningful in these builds. Uh, we also looked at the chassis a bit and looked at their abilities. They do, they are slightly different here. Let me see, is that different? No, that's the same. So they do come stock with a red boost, which is really nice, but it is red. And I talked about stress mitigation on these guys already. So one of the more standard upgrades to pop on these guys is your engine upgrade, which they have the points for usually, and is a way to make your boosts white instead of red, which is really nice. So if you have the spare points kicking around, a very strong upgrade to consider. Uh, really helps kind of open up the dial and give you more options for what abilities you want to use. Particularly good if you are going to use those uh, bullseye weapons. If you're going to use Predator, if you're going to use uh, Proton Cannons, or if you go HLC, uh, it's really good to have that engine upgrade to help you kind of get in position. Now, let's talk about the pilots a little bit. First up here, I'm going to go from bottom to top. We've got Victor Hell, who's one I really enjoy. He's an old pilot from the Kirak that's now brought back in the Rogue. After you defend, if you did not roll exactly two defense dice, the attacker gains one stress token. So really good if you're parked behind rocks. If you're at range three, when you're rolling three defense dice, that will automatically give stress to your opponents and really discourage them from shooting this guy. Um, I like to make him a little punishing. You kind of skirt around rocks. You have your synced laser cannon. You have your engine upgrade. Uh, well, no. So for him, I don't do engine upgrade. I do trick shot. So it's a little bit situational, but having trick shot on there means that as you're shooting through rocks, instead of throwing three dice, you're throwing four. So a uh, very nice piece of kit. Unfortunately, you've got 10 out of 11 loadout, and there's literally nothing he can take at that point for one point. So it's 10 out of 11, but that's a nice, simple kit that really gets the most out of his ability and kind of how you play him. So I really enjoy that personal build on him, but uh, you know, your mileage may vary. Next up, we've got Nom Lum, who's another relic from other ships. He's also a pilot on the Jumpmaster. Uh, comes in an initiative one, but... His ability is at the start of the engagement phase, you may choose one enemy ship in your forward arc if you do treat your initiative as equal to that ship's until the end of the round. Now, this is awesome because the downside of initiative one, the biggest one, is that you shoot last. Whereas with this guy, you move first. So you have every benefit of being a blocker, knowing where everything is going to be when you move, so you're not going to be surprise blocked, uh, and then getting your full action even if you do block someone. But then also in the engagement phase, you then have the option to shoot at a higher initiative than one. So you don't have the downside of being initiative one in the engagement phase. Really underrated pilot, super good. I really, really like Nam Lum with basically any build, uh, especially with high initiative ships being the majority on the table nowadays, you'll almost always have a good case to choose from. And these ships aren't that fast to where you're gonna be overshooting stuff. So you should always have a couple options in arc to choose from to pick your initiative you wanna shoot at. Cause you don't always wanna shoot at the highest initiative possible, but you can if you want to. And I appreciate that flexibility too, where you can choose and pick like that guy's I-5, that guy's I-6. I want to shoot second, I'll take I-5. Uh, he's a really fun one um, and just interesting. So again, underrated. Those are both two that I barely see experimented with at all, but they're certainly worth considering because they're very powerful pieces. 
Next up, we're going in initiative order. We're going to talk about Cad Bane. Uh, key difference. So I'll go ahead and here. After you perform an attack that hits, you may spend two, and he's got two charges that recur one per turn. So you can do this every other turn. You may spend two charges to transfer one of your non-lock red or orange tokens to the defender. Now, we already talked a bit about stress mitigation. So this is a guy you don't put engine upgrade on. You want to get a little bit of stress at key moments. So you can do focus boost to get position, and then you could use your proton cannon to pop that stress onto an opponent. And this is another case where I personally really like the proton cannon because it gives you the best punch, the most likelihood that those key hits will land so that you know you're going to pass over those tokens. So you're not taking a red token, assuming it'll pass over, and then getting stuck with it. So I really like that. Uh, he is only initiative four, so it is risky to rely on bullseye tech, but it's got both the boost and the barrel roll options. You can always throw a coordinator in there to give it a little bit more flexibility. And there are so many dense lists where you can usually expect predict where they're going to go that you shouldn't have any trouble getting these shots when you want them. It'll take a little practice. And of course, you could miss some shots you would otherwise uh, have if you had synced cannons, but you can still throw the two eye attack. And while it's not great, I mean, you still have it. So uh, Grain of Salt, but I personally really like CAD with proton cannons because of the combo with his ability and with the chassis ability dead to rights. It's a really devastating bullseye hit when it lands. You just have to make sure you're building and playing your list to the point where those do land as often as possible. Uh, in terms of upgrades, he's one of the three ships in the entire chassis that can take the Xanadu Blood title, which adds the red cloak action, then also adds a bomb and a crew slot. That's really, really key because if I take your proton cannons on here, Cad is still sitting with nine points and can take most of the most expensive crew upgrades grades available to Scum, which is really key. So if you need a carrier for someone like um, Hondo, if you want to get really weird for your coordinator, you can, but also you can have the obvious combo of... Where are you, buddy? Zuckus. Still gives you three points to spare if you want that engine upgrade, but Zuckus allows you to, uh, while you perform an attack, if you are not stressed, you may choose one defense die, gain one stress token, and if you do, the defender must reroll that die. So they get that natty evade. You can be like, reroll that evade and make it more likely that your hit is going to go through, especially if you have bullseye, and after they do the reroll, they can't spend a token. Awesome. So that combo right there is the one that I personally stick to a lot with CAD. But again, uh, with those the amount of points that CAD can throw in here, you can really make him a very scary uh, crew carrier. You can give him Rook crew, um, which is great. So yeah, because that's another passive mod. So you could do Rook cast, and you could do Rook. I think she fits with synced cannons. She does not fit with synced cannons, but she does with proton cannons. But she's another passive mod that's really pretty extraordinary. Um, these ships aren't that durable, but they're also not that squishy. So taking a strain is something you could certainly consider as tech. So like you can do a lot with CAD. Again, I personally prefer Zuckus or one of the more support-based crew, but you could always do something as well like, oh, where are you? Yamaki. Again, expensive, but he does give you the option to keep your tokens for a turn. So you can focus up one turn and then in the following turn, do other actions to position and still have those tokens available. So very flexible. Really like it because he's one of the rare cases where he has the title, access to all of Scum Crew, and a bunch of loadout to play around with them. So I don't even necessarily want to recommend any loadout beyond what I already have too much because you can do all kinds of things with CAD, and I really recommend trying it. People tend to default to Dirge because he is Initiative 5 by a significant margin, the highest initiative of all the pilots in the, in the game or in the <laughs> chassis because uh, I-5 and I-4 is a big jump. Uh, that puts him on par with most of the most common pilots in the game and puts him on the upper end of the initiative scale for the course of the game, which makes it easier to line up your bullseye shots because you know where they're going to be. Uh, his ability is a little bit weird and slightly different between Separatist and Scum. While you defend after the neutralized result step, if there are more hit slash crit results than your active shields, you may change one hit to a crit and cancel one hit result. So it's kind of funny because you, <laughs> you can do a lot with that, but long story short is it's a very defensible ability. Um, I personally really like him with Enduring because that combos well with the ability um, and gives you a better chance to kind of tank more damage. So very weird, but a little bit more tanky than the others. Uh, his loadout is the lowest of all of the named pilots in Scum, so that's definitely something to watch out for. But he's a strong contender for your synced cannons. Or, of course, something like your um, Proton Cannons and then some other upgrades. I see Proton Cannons marksmanship a lot, so that's another kind of thing to put in there. And of course, that gives you a couple points to play with because that's five. So you still have five points to play with after that. You've got your illicit. You could give him the uh, 
uh, d -d 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 false transponder codes so that he can go ahead and jam enemies. So just looking at that marksmanship there. Fairly basic uh, dirge build. Dirge is a really good one to play with if you're just not terribly familiar with the game. You want a basic one that's a high initiative that plays well and represents the chassis well. He's a good one to pick. So in the interest of keeping going, we're going to keep going. But one thing I really want to highlight here is every single one of these pilots is four points. You literally can take a squad of five of them. So five rogues, four points. And if you're concerned about lining up your bullseye shots, fly more of them. <laughs> If you get two of these, or if you get three, I really like the triple rogue with proton cannons flying in a little sort of loose formation uh, where they can really become a very intimidating joust, uh, where they can set a chase around. And then you still have eight points to put in your squad, which could be Maul, if you want to get weird, uh, or it could be two other four-point ships, or it could be a six and a two. Like There are a lot of different ways to fill that to where you still get a lot of benefit from those rogues and those proton cannons being a, a devastating piece. Because you can just think of it, again, it's... Uh, Proton Torpedoes that doesn't require a lock, even has a similar passive mod. So, uh, yeah, there we go. That scum, I really like these guys. Definitely a good piece to consider. They are the first brawler ship that scum has had in a long time, where they have two evade, but they have decent hit points, and it's a small base. Um, they are very flexible, but a little bit weird. But still, they can accomplish a lot, and I really like them as ships. So before too much time, we're going to jump into Separatist. Uh, again, you'll see R Dirge and CAD, but their abilities are slightly different. Uh, let me talk about the chassis first. So mostly the same, but and they still have dead to rights on Dirge and CAD. Yes, so we'll cover the others. So then Dirge has, when you would be destroyed, so this triggers once, uh, you may spend one charge, and he's only got one, to reveal all of your face-down damage cards. If you do, discard each direct hit and each of your damage cards with the pilot trait, and then repair all of your face-up damage cards. So he kind of gets a second lease on life, which can make him surprisingly tanky. And again, he is a character that can take uh, Enduring, which is a nice way to limit the number of crits you get, which will get you the most possible benefit from this ability, because you'll have more face-down damage cards. So pretty great ability, otherwise very similar to the Scum one, um, but I will say that this is a case where Dirge also has access to the title. So you can also take a look at those Separatist crew pieces uh, with some interesting pieces in there. Another thing I want to be sure to mention on these guys is in Separatist, they do have access to some slightly different talents. The biggest one being the old Treacherous, which is a great piece on basically anything, but especially in a ship like a Rogue. While you defend, you may choose one ship obstructing the attack, spend one. If you do, cancel one hit or crit, and then the ship you chose gains one strain token. And it's important to note that that can be a friendly ship or an enemy ship. So you make yourself a very tempting target, park yourself between a lot of attacking ships and a defending ship, and then the or an enemy ship. And the enemy ship in between triggers your treacherous and then also um, will then gain a strain token for you to shoot back on, or for your squad mates to shoot back on, because I-5 is probably shooting first. So I do like treacherous. I like it better on your lower initiative ships or in a squad where you have other lower initiative ships that can take advantage of that strain. Uh, so yeah, that is Dirge. Now, CAD's ability in Separatist is a little different. During the engagement phase, after another ship at range 0 to 3 is destroyed, you may spend 1 to perform an action, even while stressed, which is fantastic. Because, say you bring proton cannons and a bunch of droids, for example. If you're bringing vultures, which is not the best idea right now, but you could. Um, then your vultures are popping, and all of a sudden, CAD can reposition that proton cannon that he hadn't, had, that he hadn't lined up. He can do a boost or a barrel roll to get in position, or he can do a focus or target lock if he does have the shot. So that's still very, very good. Uh, and I found it to be very powerful to play against when I did. Otherwise, again, same dead to right, same dial, same initiative, everything same. CAD also has access to the title here. But of course, only one of your ships can have the title at a time. Uh, so it's important to note that. But then also, you still have access to the crew upgrades in Separatist. And then you have access to that cloak action, which is handy if you're damaged and have a crate, for example. You can just run away and cloak. And good luck to them tracking you down couple more pilots here. Uh, I'm going to jump through these. Now, IG-101 is the first of our uh, unique named Separatist pilots, and these ones have network calculations, which is important because there are a lot of other ships in Separatist that also play off networked calculations. So they will share tokens uh, with other vultures, with other hyenas, with other calculate ships. So that's important to note. They also don't have the focus action. They swap it for calculate, which is a terrific combo with your synced cannons, because these, again, do have double cannon slots. And they can take six cannons, and they will have uh, calculate tokens. 
And also an important thing to note for all of these guys is they can also take independent calculations. So when they calculate, they get two calculate tokens. Now, if you're doing the brick thing I was talking about where you have three of these that all have um, Canon upgrades, with these I would probably take synced, but you can take protons if you want to in this, which may still be better. <coughs> that doesn't have three Canon slots, there's no way. No, okay, it just wasn't displaying correctly, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is a really interesting piece. He does, so you get that synced cannons, then you're more likely to have the calculate handy so you can benefit from the sync cannon ability where if you're calculating, you can hit those range three shots without dealing with the defense bonus, which is cool. Uh, it's a really nice piece to have on these. But uh, of course that is standardized. So if you slap uh, independent calculations on any of these guys, you slap it on all of them. So that's something to keep in mind. IG-101's ability is at the start of the system phase, you may repair one face up damage card. So just boom, we'll just repair this card, which is great. Um, it's a really, really good piece of defensive tech. Um, but if you're taking damage already, eh, you're taking damage already. So while it is good, uh, his initiative four and lower loadout, I think makes him inferior to CAD. Um, but still, he's not totally worth ignoring. I just would consider him the least of the unique pilots here. So next up, we get IG-102. Obviously the better version, because he's two, because that's how that works. Uh, his ability is while you defend, if the attacker's initiative is equal to or greater than yours, you may change one blank result to a eyeball result. With initiative four, with a high initiative game going on right now, uh, that is great. So he's definitely a candidate for independent calculations. So you have the two calculates to spend on multiple defenses, um, which is good. I would consider this actually generally better defensive tech than IG-101. So hey, it turns out he is an upgrade. <laughs> uh, same loadout, same initiative. So otherwise, similar, but uh, same initiative, right? Yeah, both initiative four. Uh, but of the two, if you're picking just one more, I would take 102 over 101. Next, we've got 111, Old One Eye, I believe is his name. Uh, this is a great one. After you perform an attack that missed, you may choose one enemy ship in your bullseye and gain one deplete token. If you do, that ship suffers one damage, just takes a damage, uh, which is great. It's bullseye only on initiative one, which is a bummer, but you can use this guy as a blocker to help guarantee that you have more uh, bullseyes and then seriously discourage the ship you have at range zero from shooting at you and discourage any other ship in your bullseye from shooting at you as well. So it makes it a very tanky four. Um, four point ship, unless you are out of bullseye, in which case it does nothing. So it's not the worst thing to consider, but free damage is nice. Um, you're shooting last, so it's not that great. But if there is a ship hanging out in your bullseye in that super beautiful case where you've got a bullseye shot on a ship, it's only got one hit point left, you're just like, mm, you're dead. Um, <laughs> free damage, good. That's kind of the, the be all end all of that statement. So worth considering, but of course you are going to see CAD and Dirge a whole lot more because their abilities are just better than those. So, Of the three quote-unquote lesser ones, I would consider 111 because of that initiative one, because of being a really good blocker and early objective grabber. Uh, that makes him pretty strong. So there's that there. Next up, we've got the Magna Guard Executioner, which does not have a pilot ability. Cool, straight up generic. And then we have Magna Guard Protector, which is after placing forces, assign the guarded condition to, to, to one friendly ship other than Magna Guard Protector. And I would have to look up the guarded condition. There it is, right there. While you defend, if you are not in the attacker's bullseye, roll one additional defense die for each friendly calculating or evading Magna Guard Protector in the attack arc. Now on these guys, I did, and these are limited too, so you can take two of these. The way I ran these was I had independent calculations, and I want to say I did proton cannons. Yeah, but you can do synced. They're low initiative, so I would go ahead and do synced cannons on these. Why not? Um, because that combos with this. So you you run them up, you have them both with independent calculations, so they double calculate, and then they sort of flank your really squishy piece um, and keep it alive. So one additional defense die for each. So if you take two of these, it's eight points, sure. But if you take two of these and they're guarding, say, Sunfac, for example, Sunfac is suddenly rolling five defense dice in your worst case scenario where it's range one or two. Um, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, so I actually, when I first ran these, they had the loadout to run afterburners, which they still do, but it's not good. <laughs> um, and so I ran them with afterburners to help them keep up with uh, Sunfac so they could really help provide that, um, which is good. It does really help them keep up with Sunfac, but the ship isn't all that slow by itself. Uh, so I would go ahead and just keep them as is and bring those synced cannons and indie calculations to really benefit from 
that ability. And then you've got three more points to throw. Oh, not a HLC, excuse me. Synced cannons. And you have two points still to play with, uh, which there's not much you can do with. You could throw in a jamming beam. Uh, no, you can't. They don't have any of that. So a oh, whole Discord missiles. There's your build, right? <laughs> I love Okay, I love Discord missiles. Uh, that is a really, really strong piece. You have your AC ship. You want these guys to guard it. They give the guarded condition. Then you have buzz droids. You've got sync cannons, indie calcs. Um, that's actually a really, really good piece that I'm glad I stumbled across that. Cool. So thank you, random Redditor, who suggested covering these because I've missed that up to now. But Discord missiles are super good right now with the really big ships with low evade that have a lot of hit points to take down. You could drop that in an ARC-170, and that sucker is taking a crit every single turn. Um, that's awesome. And you'll have, with your ND Calc, you'll have two Calculates. So you can use that and then hold on to the Calculate to deny a range bonus or use it for the mod, uh, whatever you want. And then you just passively have that guarded that still works out for your uh, guarded ship. So nice. Yeah, I actually really like that build. <laughs> so there you have it. That is the breakdown of the Rogue Class Starfighter. In the interest of keeping this somewhat short, I'm going to go ahead and, and close this. Uh, I talked a little bit along the course of this about where to put these in a list. But uh, the Rogue is a really flexible piece. And the place I see it used the most and the way that probably makes it a, the best is to just slot it in any of your four point slots. Just throw in a Rogue class and see how it goes. Uh, if you have the time and, and wherewithal, I would experiment with running two of them that fly together as little wingmates who fly both with proton cannons to help line up those double um, proton cannon bullseye arcs to make sure that those a little bit more consistent and to help kind of uh, fly together because they have the same dial. Um, and a lot of them have the same initiative, so you can really fly that well and get a lot out of it. So um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful and let me know what you think.